Ingburn Science Night is here, there, and everywhere. We have a variety of uh, community friends and UK people here. We have the um, Raptor Rescue, so we have Birds of Prey, we have the Solar uh, Star Lab from uh, Living Arts and Science Center is here, we have the Solar Car from UK, we have all kinds of people who have volunteered their time and brought things in to share with our students and we just want them to see what science is going to be engineering math in their future and how they can start applying and, and moving toward that in their own uh, educational path. Hi, I'm Chris Allman with Raptor Rehabilitation of Kentucky. I'm a volunteer and we're here to uh, help people understand a little bit more about birds of prey or raptors. We're from Raptor Rehabilitation of Kentucky. Why do we do education programs? Well, it's, it's kind of a silly thing, but it, it's around rehabbers that do education. It's like trying to put ourselves out of business. If we teach enough people to respect these birds, maybe we put ourselves out of business. Not likely because uh, most of the injuries occur from uh, strike, the birds running into something that people have built. Uh, but it's being able to uh, teach these kids about things that they, they may be familiar with, that they see hundreds of feet up in the air, give them the chance to see that bird up close, get a better understanding of, of what birds are, they're a much different anatomy, and we'll, you know, you'll be able to see them up close and just see the power that these animals have and uh, their majesty, too. They're beautiful animals, whether it's the smallest kestrel or a beautiful uh, great horned owl that we have here. They're just very striking, and people are just amazed when they first set eyes on them. We, we always take questions after we uh, bring a bird out and present it to the classroom, and we, we tell kids, hold your questions till later, but inevitably we'll have several of them with their hands up through almost the entire uh, presentation. So they're eager to have their, the information about these birds, the answer their questions, uh, because they see a lot of nature shows, so they have, they're curious about these animals, and when you see them up close, it really makes you even more desirous of, of, to know what they're all about. Science is everywhere. We focus so much on math and reading that they don't understand that science is embedded in everything we do, and, and we just want to, we want to showcase that. They're seeing that science exists outside of the school day. We, for years as educators, have, I think, done a disservice by teaching science being a discrete 45-minute period in the day. And, and when I do a math activity in class, they go, what? This is science. Why are we doing math? And when I have a writing assignment, they go, well, this is language arts. And they need to see that science is embedded in every, everything else. And we have Newton's Attic here. Kids can go there during their spring break. They can go there um, on days. They have like Martin Luther King Day. They had a day for them. They have summer camps. Their um, life adventure center is here that the kids can go and do things there. They can see just all the different places that are available to them here in our local area that they can be a part of. And then they can see what's going on at UK. UK is here with various different um, um, activities and it kind of helps prepare them for hopefully going to UK someday. So my name is Chris Heinz uh, and I'm one of seven people here with the solar car today. Um, I'm actually a graduate student in mechanical engineering at UK and we're here to show the solar car that UK students build uh, at the school to try to drive up uh, interest in STEM as well as engineering um, and maybe channeling people towards UK as well as make people aware of just what uh, alternative energy is capable of. Right? So we can drive this car at about 30 miles an hour just using the power of the sun um, and solar power is often discounted as being uh, not a viable method of electricity production. So this is a great way to show that, yes, in fact, you can get a lot of energy out of the sun. So the message is really just uh, that alternative energy is coming. Um, it's really evolving very, very quickly. Um, and also that STEM can be a really fun field. You know, there's a lot of coursework in school. It's not a lot of fun. You've got to do homework and exams. Uh, but at the end of the day, depending on the field you go into, you can really actually get your hands dirty and build something and test it um, and have a working, meaningful prototype. The students are always really, we, it's interesting, we say that this, the younger students tend to ask better questions than most adults actually, uh, just because they're more open-minded and so forth. Um, but we get, we get a lot of questions about the car, you know, how fast does it go, how long does it take to build, how much does it cost, when can I buy one, etc. cetera. Uh, but it's really just cool to see all that interest that we're able to drum up from the students with STEM and technology and engineering, uh, as well as the alternative energy. My name is Debbie Harner. I am the lead discovery educator from the Lexington Living Arts and Science Center. And tonight we have brought our plant Discovery Dome Planetarium. 
and we are going to be showing a, a, a presentation in our dome called Back to the Moon. Um, well, I think, uh, unfortunately, we don't do enough science in our schools, and uh, we are excited at the Living Arts and Science Center um, to encourage and in inspire students about science and tonight we're specifically using our planetarium to inspire them about space and some of the amazing things that are happening today in our space program many of them have never been into a dome like this um, it is a special experience that not everybody gets to do so being able to see the light in their eyes when they come in and they get to just be inspired by what they see I want them to come in and say, wow, I went in that planetarium, did you know? And I said, yeah, did you know those stars? And, and springboard a discussion from that. Or to say, wow, we made, we made gliders in um, Newton's attic. And I can say, well, look, we can, we can make some in class. And let's talk about Bernoulli's principle and why, it's, why they're gliding. They can look at the solar car and we can talk about alternative energy. And so there's just a lot of things that we can, we can move from just from what they've seen here tonight. Um, I'm Seth Bayshore. I'm here with uh, Newton's Attic. Uh, we are an engineering education camp. Uh, we offer all sorts of camps to kids from ages 6 to high school age. And we do things from learning how to build and use tools to uh, programming. Um, today we've got um, our mini robots and uh, foam plate gliders here. Uh, just kind of to show some of the small things that we can do. Um, and we're here just to offer kids uh, an experience of what it's like to get into engineering. Engineering is, it's real and it's easy to see. Um, it's things like just building stuff or taking stuff apart, seeing how things work and the process it takes to get there. We're here to spread our message that um, learning about science and technology and engineering is fun and it's a valuable resource. Um, that this is how pretty much everyone that works with us, we started with small things, uh, tearing stuff apart, and then got to our stage of being actual engineers or engineering students. The cool thing for me is seeing like the light bulb go off in someone's head um, of how doing something with uh, a controller makes something else move, or that uh, cutting out this and sticking two pieces together makes some sort of glider, or you can, you can make stuff out of nothing um, and it's really cool when you see things get put together uh, out of just scrap materials or raw materials. It's actually not hard to put together. I start this in November, I start just emailing and people like the solar car is here because somebody who got my email passed it on and passed it on and pretty soon we've got a lot of people emailing saying hey can I be part of this. And absolutely, and it's just, it takes a little time, but it is, it is well worth the amount of time it takes.